Good morning. Welcome to Word of Faith Church. My name is Pastor Herb Roberts. And this morning, we're going to be talking about three reasons to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. In Hebrews 12, 2, it says, Let us focus our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. That's a very good reason to keep our eyes on Jesus. <clears throat> we start this morning by the, the first part of the three things, three reasons to keep our eyes on Jesus, and it's called single focus. <clears throat> it's impossible to focus on more than one thing at a time. At least it is for me. I can't fix my eyes on one thing and be focusing on something else. <clears throat> it's just, for me, impossible. <clears throat> we need to keep our, our focal point on one thing and one thing at a time. It's hard to Divide your attention. The more you divide it, the less something gets your full attention. Now, with that being said, if you are a worldly-minded person this morning, then you don't have to pay any more attention to this sermon because <laughs> this is talking about the things of the world. And, of course, you already know that. But if you are a like-minded, a spiritually-minded, or a Christ-minded person this morning, then you need to hear the rest of this message. Our focus must be on Jesus Christ and not of the things of the world, the things that are around us, the things that draw us away from Christ. We need to keep our focus and our attention. It's like a Oh, a horse, you ever seen those horses that pull a cart down the street? They have blinders on. So that, that is so they can't see the distractions around them. And so as a Christian, we need blinders at times, right? <laughs> We're talking about Peter this morning. And, and you remember when he was walking on the water and it was a stormy, stormy evening and he was out there. <clears throat> well... The story goes that he got out of the boat and he, he said, Jesus bid me come and Jesus did. And he started walking on the water. He started headed for uh, Jesus and he was doing great. He was doing great. And all of a sudden, he took the blinders off and he could see the wind and the storm and the waves just rolling and tossing around him. And because he took his eyes off Christ, he began to sink. And I can, I can just hear, it says in Matthew 14, 30, he cried out, Lord, save me. <clears throat> and Jesus re replied in 14, 31, O ye of little faith, <clears throat> why do you doubt? And, and Peter, as he's, as he's sinking, he's probably thinking, this is no time for a lecture, Lord. I need help here. <laughs> I'm going under. And, and you know, that's the thing. That's the thing. When in life, when we take our eyes off Christ, it is for certain we are going to go under. It, you know, it's like, Lord, help me. Lord, Lord, I'm going under. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. And Jesus had to redirect his focus back on him in order to save Peter from drowning, from going under, from going under. Now, there are two kinds of sicknesses. I'm not changing the subject. I'm just moving forward here. There are two kinds of sicknesses that can come upon us. One sickness we can endure, we can bear. But the other that is mentioned in Scripture is impossible for us as, Christ, as uh, Christians when we take our eyes off of Christ to bear, to endure. <clears throat> Without quotations, without the works of grace provided by God Almighty. <laughs> Proverbs warns of a second sickness that is unbearable to the human condition. In other words, what that simply means is it is too much for us to bear, to withstand, to carry ourselves. We need help and we need and that help can only come from God. <coughs> Excuse me. In Proverbs 18, 14, but as for the broken spirit, who can bear it? 
<coughs> Excuse me. The spirit of man can sustain in times of sickness. But <coughs> a broken spirit we cannot bear. Did you catch that? The spirit a man can carry us through sicknesses, but a broken spirit <clears throat> we cannot bear. The word broken here is a telling word. It doesn't refer to the experiences that we have when we are <clears throat> young and in love and we get our heart broken. Or it doesn't refer to novels or movies where I like watching Hallmark movies, <clears throat> Christmas ones, and, and they're... And, always in the movies there's always uh, in love break up back in love <clears throat> and this is not talking about that type of a <clears throat> broken heart or or in best-selling novels this is talking about a broken spirit that is stricken or scourged it refers to more than just suffering it refers to when we come to see that everything that we have in life means absolutely nothing. All that we have, all that we possess, all that we want means nothing in this life. And that's what this broken spirit is talking about. In Hebrews 12, 2, it said, Fix your eyes on Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. In Proverbs 16, 2, all the ways of a man are pure, pure in his own eyes. But the Lord weighs what? The spirit. The spirit. In Psalm 60, or in Psalm 36, 2. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hated. Sin is the wicked man's oracle of his heart. No fear of God before his eyes. He makes smooth to himself in his own eyes. As to discover, as to the discovery of his guilt is his hate. Simply said, when he discovers that he is guilty, he hates it. Ephraim said it best in Hosea 12, 8, Ephraim boasts, I am very rich. I have become wealthy. With all my wealth, they will not find in me any iniquity or sin. His eyes were not on Christ. His eyes were on the prize that he could gain here on earth. He neglected the prize of glory, the prize of Jesus Christ in his heart. To live for Christ is the prize. <clears throat> three parts. The three reasons to keep our eyes on Christ. Next week we're going to be talking about pressing ahead. I hope you're stay tuned. You have a good week and God bless.